welcome. It is uh, seven o'clock Mountain Time here on November 30th in Calgary. Just going to give everybody uh, a few more seconds to get logged in, but we will get started shortly. So thank you for joining us today and we'll get started in just a moment. So we are going to get started. So thank you again for joining us tonight. Uh, it's 7 p.m. Mountain Time here in Calgary on November 30th. Welcome to the Engineering Student Center, Engineering, Schulich School of Engineering Faculty Information Night. Um, first off, I'd like to start off with our land acknowledgement. Let's see if the screen moves. There we go. So the University of Calgary, located in the heart of Southern Alberta, both acknowledges and pays tribute to the traditional territories of the people of Treaty 7, which include the Black Confederacy, comprised of the Siksika, the Pigani, and the Kainine First Nations. The Satina First Nations and the Stodoni Nakoda included the Chiniki, Bearspaw, and Goody, Good Stony First Nations. The city of Calgary is also home to the Métis Nation of Alberta districts five and six. Hello again, my name is Janelle. I'm an academic advisor and the interim advising manager here in the Engineering Student Center. Along with us today on our call is Alana, our senior manager in ex our teaching and learning specialists. We have Catherine, Philippa and Sunina who are upper year, fourth year students who are here to join and to give their insight on what Schulich is all about. We have Dexter and Natalia on the chat, academic advisors to help with all of your questions, along with Bailey from the UFC recruitment team. So again, thanks so much for joining us. We'll be here for, give a presentation and then we'll have some options to do some Q&A at the end. You can put your questions into the Q&A. We will be answering throughout the session and then we'll do a live Q&A if there's some questions that are burning that everybody wants to hear that we'll get into it towards the end. Please know that this is going to be recorded. So we will be having this information published live and it will be out. So if you have any concerns, please don't put anything in any of the areas that may be concerning to you. So thank you again for joining us and we will get started. So first of all, what is engineering? So what a lot of people want to know what actually engineering is. So it's basically an exciting field that's associated with creativity and innovation. It explores to help solve real world problems, opens the door to many rewarding and lucrative careers, enhances the opportunity in different worlds and lives of others. And it is ultimately what we interact with every day in all of our day-to-day -day activities. At the Schulich School of Engineering, we have some wonderful renovations that have been going on in some state-of-the-art spaces. This is one of the views of one of our buildings. Um, it also includes some, in, some new and innovative labs. What I really like about the new renovations that have happened is when you walk around the building you're going to see what used to be outside now part of the inside so they've utilized space and the tools available to maintain the what used to be on the outside is now actually in the inside very unique opportunity to expand our building um, and keeping the old and the new together a little bit about the admissions for in coming into the Schulich. So there are a couple pathways. The first pathway is our, what we call the traditional pathway. So for speaking in um, high school in Alberta, we would be requesting a ELA 30-1, Math 30-1, 
Math 31, so a pre-calculus or an equivalent, Chemistry 30, and Physics 30. Um, have a little note there beside Math 31. If you have don't have Math 31 available in your area or there was some reasons you weren't able to take it, there are alternate pathways to be admitted. So just because you weren't able to or couldn't take Math 31 doesn't mean you're not um, equivalent or able to be accepted. It'll just be your file will be reviewed differently and the admissions will will definitely review those files and let you know what options are available to you. There is an, another alternate pathway to come into Schulich, which is through the bioengineering pathway. So the bio summer institute. So ultimately you still require the English 30, the math 30, the math 31, the chemistry 30, but instead of taking the physics, you can take the bio 30 and we'll use the bio 30 mark for entrance. But there is a little note that I've said here about the bio summer institute. So there are some conditions. So you do have to clear the bio summer institute conditions that are applied to your admissions. And what we're going to do is we'll have uh, sorry, Philippa, speak a little bit about the Bio Summer Institute because she was actually part of it. Yeah, so the Bio Summer Institute, as Janelle mentioned, is a way for students that didn't do physics in high school or didn't do great in physics in high school, but did really well in biology to get into engineering. From what I know, I believe it's the only institution in Canada, if not North America, that has this because I looked when I was applying. It's a four week program in August and it's hands on bioengineering learning while getting foundation in physics that you need for your engineering. And while we still recommend Physics 30 because it kind of helps with your courses, it's not a re prerequisite in the sense that it used to be. I did this class, it was four weeks. It was an incredible amount of fun. We made a luge track as one of our projects. And despite not doing either Physics 20 or 30, because I did this, I still got like a B plus in first year physics. So yeah, it's a really great time. Will let you know if you are admitted through the Bio Institute and they will let you know the conditions that need to be cleared. So if you have questions about that, the admissions office will definitely um, be able to help you with those questions if you think you would qualify for the Bio Summer Institute application. We're going to now move into kind of what our first year engineering looks like. So we're going to introduce what's called Schulich Studio and uh, Lana is going to talk a little bit about what Schulich Studio is. Yes, so um, I work exclusively with the first year student, so doing a lot of the scheduling. Um, so Schulich Studio is sort of a new way of learning in uh, engineering. So it's kind of like a flipped classroom right now. So typically university uh, courses are, you know, three hours of lectures, maybe an hour of lab, and then a lot of learning on your own. Um, what we're doing now in Schulich Studio is um, focusing on that hands-on experiential learning, um, especially in your first year. So in the first year, there's 10 courses, five in your first term, five in your second. All of them include um, either two hours or three hours of experiential learning in addition to, there we go, <laughs> in, in, in addition to some of the lectures. Um, we're we talk a lot with the students, so it's a fairly new program. So we're working with block representatives um, to improve this, but our current model is Monday and Tuesday, you'll have your one hour lectures or you'll have your lectures. Um, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday for your courses are those experiential learning sessions. So you'll spend time with your, your block, with your cohorts, working on problems, collaborating, um, you know, learning how to ask questions, learning how to work together and really have that focus rather than that focus sort of being on you listening to lectures and trying to make sense of everything. Um, and that kind of goes through, like we saw in the previous slide, uh, all from first year, it's the big focus, but we are also trying to include that in your second, third and fourth years as you go through your program. Again, bringing that focus back to it, that experiential hands-on learning, again, because that's what engineers do. Perfect. Uh, did I forget anything? Hang on. That was good. That was good. Um, we're going to go to Catherine now to talk a little bit about some of the scholarship opportunities that may be available to you. 
Yeah, thank you, Jill. Um, so in terms of exceptional scholarships, um, the University of Cali really does have paying your degree at the top of the mind. Um, and that's why we have so many scholarships available. So last year, uh, University of Calgary engineering students received 4.5 million in scholarships, awards, and bursaries. And we have a host of scholarships available only to engineering students, including the Simon Schulich scholarships that are available for 24 people each year. Um, and those are engineering students. And that is the one that I'm currently on. So that kind of subset of scholarships is divided into both academic and community service. Where straight out of high school, I received the community service. Um, scholarship and this was kind of just based on the prestige award application where after that um, you end up doing a interview and then getting the scholarship for the value of around $37,200 or $61,800. Um, and that kind of just determines whether you're an international student or you're a um, domestic student. And so that total value is split out through three individual years and it has helped to fund my entire engineering degree. Um, and so that is definitely one of the top experiences uh, for the scholarships at the University of Calgary. But apart from that one, we also have the Dean's Entrance Scholarship that is valued at $6,750, the Schulich School of Engineering Scholarships for $5,000 and the Bursary for Engineering Students at $4,000. So apart from this, you can also get um, not engineering specific scholarships, but like broadly um, do Calgary Awards. And that includes the Chancellor's Club Scholarship that is valued at 40,000 over four years. Um, the President's Admission Scholarships valued at $5,000. The IB Diploma Entrance Scholarships that are valued at 3,500. And so kind of when you're undergoing that application process, some of them you are automatically considered for based on your marks coming out of high school. But like those um, prestige scholarships mentioned, like the Simon Schulich one, the one that I'm on, um, those are considered to be prestige awards and a chancellor scholarship. And so for those, you need to apply for engineering and complete that other separate scholarship application um, that's due on December 1st. It is absolutely worth it. I um, definitely, it made my engineering experience a lot easier to not have to worry about the money aspect. Um, there are also many external awards out there. So these are awards that are not, they're not directly connected with the University of Calgary, um, but you can definitely check to see um, your parents' work companies to see if there's any scholarships around as well as just a general Google search always um, gets you a good starting point. out there definitely take a look at the University of Calgary Awards website it is a pretty lengthy um, amount of awards available to a lot of students so please take that opportunity to take a look at it and, and complete it out um, when you have the moment because it will definitely help um, with your throughout your time with us. So I'm going to go a little bit into the majors that are available to you. As we said, I have three students with us here today who are in different areas. So it's exciting to have them here with us. So at Schulich, you'll get in a foundation in all majors during your first year uh, before you specialize. And that's what we call our Schulich Studio. This ensures you that you have a strong foundation and then you move into your major or your specialization into your second year. These are programs that you can apply to, um, as we said, going into your second year. So a little bit about all of them. The biomedical engineering works at the intersection of medicine, engineering, science, and other disciplines to solve problems in the health area. Chemical engineering is about transforming new raw material into useful product. It can be in the pharmaceutical, healthcare, plastics, energy, and more. It's actually a very broad based form of engineering. Geomatics is one of the fastest growing information scientists. Just think about the GPS on your phone, the cars, managing big data, internet, and things like that, that is all encompassed under the geomatic engineering. Uh, we pretty much have the best geomatic department in Canada. Um, I'm sure our geomatics department would agree with that statement. Uh, software engineering, engineering is a, a demanding field where companies are looking for tech talent everywhere and software engineers are in high demand. Philippa is one of our software. Mechanical engineering encompasses everything from robotics to artificial joints, cutting edge vehicles. If you like to design, make and build things, mechanical engineering is probably something you would want to look into. Civil engineering is all about helping the environment and building smart communities. Definitely a, a, a 
area of interest now coming into the new world. So transit, bridge, sa bridge and building safety, water safety, and a lot, lot more. So it's, it's very innovative, innovative in the, the new world. Uh, electrical engineering is about creating new technologies through the manipulation of electricity or finding new ways to better harness sustainable engineering. Now, sustainable engineering is a new program that we've introduced this year. We're very excited to introduce it at Schulich. It is our newest major and one of the most transdisciplinary majors focusing on how to design, integrate, and manage complex systems over their life cycles with a goal of our environmental, economic, and social sustainability. We do have a new engineering program that is going to be introduced in fall of 24 for our current first years. That is the engineering physics program. It is going to take the key components of electrical, mechanical, and physics to create a practical solution based engineering program. So we're new, we're excited to join, have that program join or have our, give our st current students the opportunity to start that new program. We also do offer a dual degree where you can earn a full engineering degree and a full business degree in as little as five years. You get access to career support from both the Schulich School of Engineering and the Haskane School of Business. And you can apply for this dual degree straight out of high school, but it is also available to you within your specialization request going into your second year. Not only do we have those wonderful and exciting majors, we have a large list of minors that are also available to be added on to your current major program. So we have a lot of great ones to choose from. You can apply for most of your minors at the same time as you apply for your major. So going into your second year, some of the minors or specializations are offered into the upper years and you'll know when you go into these programs which which ones these would relate to. I highly recommend you take a look at our shulet.ucalgary.ca website to take a look at any of these minors as it will clearly note which minor is related to which major. So the website is a great resource for that because there are lots of combinations that you can take if you're interested in one major and one minor. Going to move on to Sinena, who's going to read a, a tell us a little bit about uh, engineering work experience. Awesome, thank you. Um, so there's quite a few opportunities for engineering work experience throughout your degree. Um, we have a practicum program that is targeted for first year students and is a two year program that focuses on building professional skills and career readiness. Um, and so each phase will culminate in a summer work term um, and work placements may occur in the summer or be part um, or be part time. And so that totals a, about 350 hours. Um, and so this program really helps students realize the importance of early work experience before internship. Um, and after graduation, jobs and careers and opportunities available to you. So it's definitely worth enrolling yourself in this program. Um, at Schulich, after third year, you also get to go on internship for a year, um, and you can start to test out what type of engineer you really want to be and what industries you want to work in um, and get relevant experience working in these fields. Um, you also get paid. The average engineering intern is earning about $55,000 a year. Um, the 12 to 16 month internship programs are flexible and can match and align with your career goals. Um, the reason that you might want to do a 12 month internship is because it creates more value for you as a student um, and also for the employer. With only four months at a co-op offered by many other schools, um, it is hard to get the necessary hands-on experience to really start adding value to your resume. Um, but when you stick to a company for a whole year or more, um, you get the opportunity to really do some um, hands-on engineering work. So you can do your internship locally or you can work around the world. Um, the UFC job portal offers um, options for internships in Switzerland, in Japan, throughout North America, and more. Um, UFC's internships are nationally accredited, which means we're recognized for the quality of work experience opportunities we can offer. 76% um, of graduates from May 2023 recently convocated with their internship designation. Um, so this is a critical aspect in launching your career, and that's why there's a focus on engineering career supports at Schulich. 
Um, I will say personally, I had a really positive experience completing my internship year recently at a local company specializing in medical device manufacturing, among other projects. Um, and so I do want to say I was able to create this job opportunity for myself through my involvement on campus with the Biomedical Engineering Student Society. Um, and that really allowed me to network with people working in my choice of industry prior to my internship year. Um, my internship was super hands-on. Um, it involved manufacturing experience where I got to work essentially in a machine shop um, and learn how to operate and maintain 3D printing machinery and water jet cutters, among other manufacturing equipment. Um, and I also developed proficiency in computer-aided design work to build engineering drawings and design parts for our devices. Um, so I do want to highlight the relevance as well of coursework I completed throughout my degree at Schulich prior to internship, which really helped me in like greatly in settling into my internship role because I already received exposure to manufacturing and computer aided design through my coursework. Wow, it's super exciting. That sounds like a really interesting uh, internship. Um, sounds like it was a great benefit for you. Catherine, we're going to then move on. You can talk a little bit about some of the enhanced education options that we have for students. Sure, thank you. Um, so we do have an awesome mentorship program that um, kind of starts seeking advice from experienced students and industry members. And so um, we have two kind of main points um, for the mentorship program. The first being to connect first year students with upper year students to gain advice receive support and connect with new people and resources. And the second being to connect with career-minded students, um, alumni and industry mentors to learn from their experiences to help your own career goals. So this kind of serves to kind of form that, um, you can, in your first, you can form more of like a friendship with your mentor. Um, I had a mentor in my first year, I was able to learn a lot more about the new public campus. And you're also able to do that through different programs such as the engineering leadership program. That is a very comprehensive certificate program that allows students to grow in their professional skills through weekly workshops, networking sessions, and our annual leadership conference that has over 400 students attend each year, along with professionals with the leadership experience that lead seminars and workshops throughout the day. We also have an entrepreneurship program that is another certificate program that allows students to grow their own business ideas and develop their skills through workshops in product design, marketing, startup financials, and more. So this entrepreneurship program is also very special because you can go on to do an entrepreneurial capstone in your last year of studies if that is in your area of interest. And lastly, we also have our personal and community mental well-being program that is a new program that has launched this fall and has been created so that every student who enters engineering has the opportunity to develop skills that can help them manage the challenges of life as an engineering student and as an, and as an engineer out in the real world. Okay, she has Danita, do you want to add a little bit of your experience? Yeah, sure. Just adding on to what Catherine already mentioned, um, there are so many opportunities for mentorship on campus, even outside of Schulich. Um, in my first year, I was a part of a program called First Year Scholars through the Scholars Academy on campus, um, which is now referred to as Aspire. Um, and I was assigned a mentor who was in his first year, first year of, um, or sorry, fifth year of mechanical and biomedical engineering at that time. Um, and speaking with him about his experiences, and he got to do his internship in Japan, um, you know, all of that really um, prompted me to kind of follow in his path with mechanical and biomedical engineering as well. Um, and so the program itself also offers um, other incentives, such as regular workshops for um, scholarship applications, resume drafting, um, and also just facilitates meaningful connections with students across campus through mentorship circles um, and other events. So I would highly recommend looking into the Aspire program as well if you're interested. Tell us a little bit about more about some more experiences that are offered here at Schulich. Yes, I think one of um, one of the most fun and certainly exciting experiences are our global ex um, learning opportunities, particularly the global experiences. And, and these are trips where um, each department um, selects a country where they want to expose their students to uh, different engineering practices, leading edge. Um, different universities and you'll often get an opportunity to connect with uh, local industry as well some of the the trips that are occurring um, next february are electrical some of our electrical students are going to uh, the netherlands uh, biomeds going to france our software students are going to silicon valley 
and each department has a trip. Um, civil engineering, for example, is going to Portugal. Uh, th these trips are highly subsidized by, by um, the faculty, uh, approximately 50%. And if you maintain a good GPA of 2.0 or higher, um, and you're in good academic standing, you're able, you're entered into a lottery and we select anywhere from 10 to 20 students who go with chaperones for these trips. Um, they're really, the feedback we've had is that they're really eye-opening to how engineering can be practiced um, in, in different locations around the world. Um, and then the other, the corollary to this is we're currently offering outdoor leadership experiences uh, for students who are enrolled in our leadership development uh, co-curricular program. And recently this fall, they went hiking in the back country and we actually have, excuse me, a canoe trip planned for next spring. Um, and I know that the next slide is going to quickly touch on the Schulich Student Activities Fund, which helps support uh, activities of teams and clubs, students who are presenting their research or attending conferences internationally. Uh, yeah, so Schulich, oh, sorry, no. uh, at Schulich, we're not just about uh, doing all your coursework and getting overwhelmed with homework. We also have the most fun of anyone on campus, which you'll see if you walk through the engineering building and you'll see all of the posters for all of the various club events. So we have over 45 clubs and teams on campus, including things like Engineers Without Borders, Women in Science and Engineering, with Kat, which Catherine and I are both on the executive of, Schulich Soundstage, Space Rover teams, Formula One teams, you name it, there's probably a team at Schulich doing it. We have dedicated and fully equipped student team and club spaces, as well as, as Alana mentioned, we have our Schulich Student Activities Fund, which provides $500,000 per year to students going on educational trips and team competitions. I know our satellite team used it to go to Ottawa for a conference, things like that. Our Schulich Racing team was the top Canadian team at the Formula SAE in Brooklyn, Michigan, on a track where IndyCar Classics are held. We beat teams from U of A, Berkeley, U Ottawa. So you can be involved in clubs and be an engineer. School classes don't have to be your life. You can also do extracurriculars and meet people and have fun. And you can also be an athlete as well as an engineer. There are varsity programs and you can talk to advisors about how to balance activities with that and your engineering education. But I've had a lot of fun on clubs and I know everyone else I know in a club also has a lot of fun. Catherine, do you want to add something to there as well? Sure. Um, yeah, like Philippa mentioned, I think the club experience on campus is definitely one of the best experiences you can put yourself through. Um, you tend to meet so many blended individuals and make such a nice community out of everyone you meet. Um, so I definitely recommend it. In terms of kind of exact experiences that I can talk about, the first one is um, Women in Science and Engineering. So I have been on that experience since my first year, so as Philippa. And I have to say it is one of the most rewarding clubs that I have been part of because you kind of just get... Um, to advocate and to help out um, underrepresented groups. And that includes like high school students, um, as well as you're dealing with industry. Um, and you're creating all these outreach events to kind of foster a more inclusive community in engineering and science. So you're exposed to more than just engineering and you can make so many friends and interact with so many cool people. And my second one is more or less um, an engineer design focus team called Go Baby Go. So we build um, basically cars for children with disabilities and it just shows how you can truly take a path of engineering in whatever direction that you want um, and then apply those technical skills. And it has been such a rewarding experience to kind of build um, a person prototype that's able to move on its own and kind of be, see what skills, um, how my engineering skills can actually be applied in a real project. And just to build on that, sorry, one more thing. Um, it's not just connections with other students you build. I have built so many industry connections through WISE. It's insane. It's very valuable. Nana, do you have some input as well? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I completely agree with what's been described so far. Um, I've also had many professional development opportunities, more so through involvements in leadership-oriented clubs on campus um, and technical engineering teams, where you actually get to apply your engineering skills and work with people in industry. Um, I do also want to mention that the University of Calgary is renowned for its research. Um, I connected with my research supervisor through one of my BME minor courses and was able to secure a grant to work with her lab. Um, and during that time, 
time I had the chance to present at various conferences, such as the Alberta Biomedical Engineering Conference in Banff, um, as well as the ISIC Congress in Quebec City. Um, and what's great is that all of my trips were fully funded. Um, so UFC provides numerous funding options for activities like this, um, allowing students to pursue significant opportunities. Um, and so this sort of support really played like a big role in my life and developing my confidence, critical thinking skills, and public speaking abilities as well. Um, and currently I am working on an undergraduate thesis and actually I know Catherine is as well. Um, so it's incredible to see how many doors have opened through involvement in undergraduate research. And this is actually quite common at UFC. Wow, well, thank you so much. That sounds like very exciting. And I knew you guys were busy, but you definitely uh, uh, showed it here tonight for sure. So thank you again. Uh, we're going to move on to another area that the Schulich has excelled on what we call in our world called the makerspace. So Lana, you can speak on that. Sorry, yes. So um, the engineering makerspace is, um, there's several different spaces where you can build your design skills. So this is in addition to the spaces that you would use for Schulich Studio. So we've got several 3D printers, there's recording booths, um, musical instruments. So if you would like that, so don't join a club, you can play music, right? Join a band. Um, we have a woodworking shop, we have a machine shop, there's a paint booth, art and textiles room. Uh, the design headquarters, uh, brand new electrical workshop. So for those of you that are interested in electrical engineering, you can go in there and build things, robotics. Um, all of the materials, the use of the spaces, that's all included. Um, you don't have to pay any extra for that. Uh, next slide. Yeah. There you go. And then so as also part of the makerspace is Zeta. So this is our sort of digital makerspace. So there's a digital design lab. Uh, there's workshops that you can do. We host hackathons that you can join. Uh, there's a virtual reality lab. So you can develop virtual reality. You can go in and use the virtual reality um, glasses. There's the Internet of Things Lab to explore sensor and software development and gather data. Um, so it's, again, all of that is available to you. No extra charge, um, you're able to use it. And, and this is um, outside of your experiential learning. Yeah, the add-ons and um, the 3D printers, I mean, there are always, 33D printers going at all times in our labs with projects for students so they can have tactile learning experiences when it comes to their, their labs. Yeah, so many cool things that you can 3D print. Perfect, we're gonna move on to um, the wellness, Shulik Wellness and the initiative we have here for, um, and I'll go into that. Yes, I wanted to tell you about the dedication that our faculty has to student staff and faculty well-being. They have a room uh, dedicated to it and you can go in there and you can do all sorts of things. You can just chill and hang out. They actually have a couple of massage chairs. Um, and in fact, I used one today just before lunchtime because I was attending a yoga session. Um, they have music watch workshops in there. We also offer certificate programs uh, around well-being. And in fact, well-being um, content is embedded in first year programming so that you're equipped with um, tools, strategies, techniques to ensure that you're resilient through your first year and into your undergraduate career. And um, Um, to help build and, and broaden your expertise, your well-being expertise. So lots of uh, lots of important support around this critical topic at Shulik. Yeah, we've recently brought in some sleeping pods. So we have some spaces for yes. students to go to decompress, um, some quiet zones where you can go and work in a quiet environment. So we've definitely taken wellness for both our students and our staff very seriously. And we um, pride ourselves on the initiative that we've taken and moved forward with. 
So there are lots of connections that you can do if you're interested in Shulik and you want to start getting connected. Uh, our students here were definitely showing that there are other things other than just your studies and your classes. So there are different initiatives, initiatives out there that you could actually start connecting with now. So you can work with your high school counselors or you can connect with us through our website or our email um, to see if you can get involved in any of the programs. We have some You Connect, Shulik Ignites. We have um, Women in Aviation or sorry, Women in Engineering Nights. So we do have all of those activities available. So please check our website, Future Students, Undergraduate Diversity. You can take a look at what's available. And if you're interested in anything, please check your email and watch for communications because we are continuously having students in our areas to, to show off what we've got available and to invite everyone to come and take a look at what's going on. So, and Shulix is definitely proud of their program and their school. So, we graduate, we enhance, we grow careers, we have exponential learning, we have scholarships, and we're really proud of the graduates we have. So I'm gonna ask my three students, Zunana, first, why did you choose Shulik? Yeah, so I chose Shulik for several reasons. Um, aside from practical considerations like my family living here and my existing comfort with living in Calgary, um, I was drawn to the fact that U of C, despite being a large campus, uh, maintains a really strong sense of interconnectedness. And this is something that I had heard from upper year students before joining as well. Um, comparing my experiences with friends who attended other large campuses, um, it did seem like they faced more challenges with finding professional development opportunities, um, such as research opportunities and joining popular campus clubs. Um, and it felt like being a small fish in a big pond elsewhere. Um, while I'm not saying that involvement at Shulik isn't competitive, um, I found that the community here is highly interconnected. And so one opportunity often does lead to another. Um, and there are so many options for professional development, club participation, and on-campus research that getting started in these areas is, in my opinion, um, um, much more accessible at Shulik. And then I'm just going to jump in. It's Lana. Um, and that's another benefit of the Shulik Studio model is that you will go through your entire first year as a cohort with no more than 100 students in your cohort. So you get to work with those students. You get to build that sense of community through your entire first year um, where you wouldn't get that in um sort of more of the, the typical university, 400 people in a theater, um, you're working together and you have that closeness. Exactly, Philippa, can you tell me why, tell us why you chose Shulik? All right, so one of the reasons I already mentioned, I didn't take physics in high school, which <laughs> meant that this was the only university in which I could take software engineering. It also, the dual degree program really interests me. I'm a dual degree in computer science and software engineering because I was indecisive in high school and couldn't tell the difference. So UFC was a place that allowed me to do both degrees simultaneously. So I'm a dual degree, not a double major and not a major minor. Um, as well, one of the things that really intrigued me about Shulik was the hands-on and practicalness of the degree. It wasn't entirely theory-based. I'd actually be touching and working with things, actually writing code instead of just planning an algorithm because you write enough algorithms and they get annoying and you want to code something. <laughs> so yeah, that was the reasons I chose you like. Awesome. And yeah, you touched a bit a little bit about how you're a dual degree where we have an approved business one, but there are other options out there. I know students who are in software engineering and a music degree, like there are other options and there's also other options when it comes to an out of faculty minor. So you're not limited. You definitely have lots of options when it comes to your, your path here at the UC. And Catherine, why don't you tell us why you chose Shulik? Sure. Um, the first point um, that I guess kind of led me to choose um, engineering at the University of Calgary was the scholarship that I received. So as I mentioned, that prestige scholarship really did lighten a very big load on my academic career. And so it kind of just made sense for me to go um, wherever I got the most money and that ended up being in Calgary. Um, the second reason for me was when I was applying and I went and I got any analyst advice about picking university, I found out that the biomedical engineering major was gonna be a thing the year that I was picking my discipline. 
And that was a really important um, step for me because I looked at the other engineering um, disciplines and I was interested in them, but I wasn't really inspired. Um, but with the biomedical engineering one, I was really inspired to become an engineer and kind of make a difference in the areas that I could. Um, and so I do have to say that the biomedical engineering like major discipline has been such a great experience for myself. I have so many hands-on skills that skills that I've kind of picked up along the way, and I've been able to create so many special products um, and just kind of random things. But I didn't think I would have the opportunity to make any of those hands-on um, kind of technical skills. Um, yeah, and I guess the last one is also at mentioned um, the research atmosphere so going in from high school I had a bit of research experience in bioinformatics and I kind of wanted to explore that world as a first year and going into my undergraduate career um, and so I already knew about the world of microdevices and nano devices and I saw that we had a microsystems hub here and so I was able to facilitate that connection in my first year um, and yeah that really did help me picking a university that felt more like home than anything else. Uh, very exciting from all of you, and thank you so much again. I'll say it a few times. That we're representing what Shulik actually means and the student that we are proud to graduate um, from our program. So thank you again, all of you. So a few key um, dates to look at. So these are all, all posted on all the websites, but just so we can review them, uh, the undergrad applications have opened. The prestige awards um, do have some deadlines. So just make sure you're aware of where they are and they do creep up a little bit quicker. Um, one of them is showing for tomorrow. So um, definitely take a look at all the awards, look at all the deadlines. There are some individual information so make sure you read through all that. The fall admission applications is, has a date, due date. Uh, the transcripts have a due date um, and then the deadline to actually accept your offer. So um, please just keep watching all the communications that are out there and follow the deadlines because they uh, they are pretty strict and we do move through them. So and we are a program that typically fills. OK, so we are a highly competitive program and we do fill. So um, if you do get uh, admission, please take a look. And if you have any questions, let us know what they are before the deadlines, because we don't want you to miss out on joining us here at Julik. So that is the end of our uh, official presentation. So if you do have any questions that we don't get through today, this is our email address. You can email discoverengineering at ucalgary.ca, where you can ask any questions about the Schulich family, the teams, the clubs, the programs. If you have admissions questions, those can go to admissions. So if you have those kind of questions, we can definitely do that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up the Q&A for any questions that are outstanding. We still have uh, the advisors on the chat, but we're gonna have Dexter ask some questions live so we can have the opportunity to, to get our feedback or from, from the students. So we'll move through that. I know there was one question that he uh, brought up about the bioengineering summer institute. That is not required or connected to biomedical engineering. Okay, it is it is a way of being admitted if you took biology, but it is not connected. You don't need that program to go into biomedical engineering in your second year. It is not required. So it is part of admissions. So as Philippa was saying, she did not take physics. So it's a way to admit students who are obviously brilliant um, and just took biology in high school instead of physics. So it is not connected to the biomedical, it is independent of, of that. So that was one of the questions that came up. So you can still put questions in the chat and, and we'll see if there are any questions out there that, that need answering live. So we'll, we'll go ahead into that now. Take a look here. Okay, yeah, so there's a bunch, but they're for um, admission specifically. So we'll just uh, let them cover those. Um, a couple that came up uh, that were about, you know, taking other programs in, in conjunction with engineering and how that would work. Um, the, the biggest thing for students to understand is that engineering becomes your home faculty. Uh, so the engineering rules and regulations apply first and foremost. And so what that means is you have to be a full-time engineering student. So you would be taking a minimum of three courses per term of engineering courses. And then we could look at adding in whatever other program you are in, uh, in conjunction with that. That said, 
Uh, what we advise all students is that they complete their first year common core before we start integrating the combined aspect. Uh, that just opens up a lot of doors for students um, for progression down the line. Uh, so that's kind of the only thing is that first year, you can expect that primarily you would be focusing on your first year common core. Okay, so there was a, there was a few questions about how to take courses concurrently with engineering. So I thought I would just touch on that pretty quick. Um, I also wanted to ask some of our students if they could maybe just pipe up about their experience because I, I had one question that I, I honestly, I can't answer. Um, so I did say that, that yes, you can participate in more than one club at, at once. Uh, however, the next question to that is, if so, what is too much? And I wondered if you could touch on that. Whoever unmutes first can go. Philippa. <laughs> okay, I'll go. Um, for me, I'm only involved in like, I say one and a half clubs, um, because that's what I found my limit was. I realized what my boundaries were for how much I could take on at a given moment and still have time to take care of myself. So I don't do schoolwork or clubs work on weekends. And because of that, I am in one and a half clubs. So I think just finding where your limit is and what makes you overwhelmed and what keeps you operating at a level where you can still get eight hours of sleep a night. Perfect. And yeah, there's definitely, it's a, it's a personal balance. Um, a lot of people don't know that the programs are written to be done in four years, five if you do the business dual degree, but you do have eight years or nine years if you go on internship to finish your degree. And what we do find, and you are hearing out there, that industry also wants to know what you did while you were on your degree. So um, four years is is the minimum, but it is not required to be done that quickly. So if you wanted to spread it out and have some conversations about that, that is definitely an option to you. I'm going to just pipe in a little bit about the grades. So as I said, we are a competitive faculty. We are recommending if you are in the 80s in those five prerequisites that you are competitive. So that means you can still apply and we would highly encourage everyone to do that. So you would still be competitive. Because we are a competitive faculty, that number does change. So we can't give you a set number, but we highly recommend and encourage if you're in the 80s to apply. And if you're interested in engineering to apply, okay? And they'll admissions will review your file and let you know the best steps moving forward. So that was a good um, good question, a couple of good questions on there that I saw. So I was able to answer that for you. Um, Janelle, can yes. you please uh, just quickly touch on a little bit of what the first year Common Core looks like and how uh, blocks are done? There's quite a few questions on how courses are scheduled, how many courses you take in first year, what that looks like. Okay, I could definitely give you some information, but I think Lana will be the best to fill that those spots. But basically, there's 10 first year courses, five in the first uh, term. So in fall and five in the winter term, as we said, we do have a large admission cohort, but you're broken into no more than 100 students learning cohorts that you stay with throughout the whole term. So and you touch on every topic. There is math, there is calculus, there is linear, there is physics. Um, Lana, do you want to maybe expand on the courses? And um, Yeah, so the courses, they're not sort of labeled as such, but they do include elements of sort of all of the majors. So you get a little taste. So they are all common core. So all students that are admitted to engineering will take the exact same 10 courses um again only broken down into little cohorts um and i mentioned i think to somebody in the chat we've got 12 blocks and so when we do the scheduling we do try to give you a variety so there's some blocks that have all of their courses in the morning um there's some that have them in the afternoon there's some that have different spacing so again if you've got um work or other commitments, it is highly likely that you can find a schedule that would work with your um, your other commitments. Um, we do prefer that you stay in one cohort. Again, because the information sort of flows, you work on teams and you build that sort of camaraderie. 
Um, but if you have extenuating circumstances, you can always talk to one of the advisors um, and we can sort of see what we can do. What usually happens is we send out um, when you're accepted sort of around the spring, Janelle, do you remember when you'd send out the, yeah, I guess, preference for? Yeah, there's communication that goes out to you to um choose your preferred block. We do our best to get you into it. So once you're admitted into engineering, um, then that May 1st deadline is when the, the ball start rolling for when it comes to enrollment. And then you'll get communicated to, to review the blocks that are available. Blocks are ultimately just a version of a schedule. Engineering is a little bit different because of our unique Schulich Studio experiences that we actually enroll you in your first year courses for you. So we actually ask your opinion on which schedule fits best. And then we do the enrollment for you, not compared to other faculties where you a student has to do because Schulich has a, an ebb and flow when it comes to it. We do have some scheduling restrictions um, that make it easy to plan, but we want to help the students in their first year when it comes to the Shulik Studio experience. So we do the enrollment for you. So that will be after the May 1st deadline. So we can start the enrollment process for all of our students. Even if you are not admitted after May 1st, that process will still keep rolling through and it rolls through all the way through the summer months. So it is just a, a large amount of options for you for picking a schedule that works best for you. Yeah. And so there was a question. Um, yeah, and Dexter answered it. So do students get to choose the cohort they're in or are they placed in blocks? It depends is the answer. Um, again, if you're in early enough, we do send out an email asking you to rank your choices. And I think Janelle, you did say that was May that you send that yeah. out. Yeah, it's just after, it'll start after the, the, the deadlines have started. So I don't want to say it's going to be May 2nd, but it, after that May um, application deadline is when we start moving through the cohort co communications. Yeah, so. so do keep an eye on your email um, because it will come as a Qualtrics survey. Then we do get you to rank your choices and try to give you the blocks that you do want. Um, anyone who's accepted later, we may, again, yeah, like Dexter said, <laughs> if you answer by the deadline after that, we may just start filling blocks um, sort of with, with available time. So again, the, the big answer is it depends. Dexter, go ahead. Uh, okay, so can maybe uh, Philippa answer the question of what is the main difference between computer science and software engineering? Okay, so I'm four years deep and I've only just figured it out. So um, I like to say comp sci is a disguised math degree. So in computer science, you take more courses related to theory and first order logic and algorithm construction. Whereas in software engineering, you get to do things like project management and how to design a program versus an algorithm, something that a person will interact with, how to do a lot of back end and also a bit of front end and also a little bit of um, hardware. Like I got to take embedded systems, which I wouldn't have gotten to do if I only did comp sci. So it's things like that. So in, um, in software, you're designing a software and a program and in comp sci, you're designing an algorithm. Yeah, and I always okay. say this, this is kind of my way of doing it is that the comp sci is you're doing you're doing the data, you're doing it. Where engineering is you're taking that data and applying it to something. You're making it better. You're making it new. You're trying something different. You're you're still using the comp sci data or information that you're learning, but engineering takes it to that one extra little level of making it better, add it, put it on a space arm on the space station or put it in the Tesla driving car or um, the next bridge in cement material, like those kind of things. So it's it's a building of and changing and like you said, an, an initiative and an innovation process. Yeah, the software engineer tells the computer scientist what to design an algorithm for. <laughs> I say that too. You're the team leader or the team. So it, it just depends, right? So there is there is a, a difference. It is slight, but it is there um, for sure. And it's always a question that is definitely asked throughout. So um, perfect. I'll just keep taking a look through. Uh, some I of just have one, one more Go to ahead. add to that, Philippa. Um, if you can also add in your, I guess, your opinion, 
uh, between software engineering uh, and electrical with a computer science dual degree? What What's your opinions on the pros and cons? So my dual degree worked out really nicely because of the way the course sequence is for software engineering and computer science. There was like 70% course overlap. So I can actually finish my dual degree in five years. Um, the further you get away from having that much overlap, the longer your degree will take. And I'm very well acquainted with my course calendar at this point. Um, but with electrical, you end up doing a lot more things like signal processing and um, working with a lot of circuitry. Like it's electrical engineering. You end up working with a lot of wires. Um, and then having that comp set, I think that software and comp set complement each other really well. I don't have enough experience with elect to say how it would complement comp size. And that's, that's, uh, you can also reach out to science uh, for if you have any questions in, in kind of the comp sci world to deep dive into it a little bit more too. Science advising is just like engineering advising. They have advisors who can, who can chat with you about those. So thank you, Philippa. We'll add a few more questions. Um, I would say to the questions about the first year, I would say that every major is touched on in some component in your first year 10 courses, um, com combined in one course or standalone in one course, but every major is touched on in some point in your first 10 courses. So if you are undecided on a few things or you want to solidify, that is the, the best highlight when it comes to our Shulik Studio and the Common Core. You're going to solidify, yes, I want this or no, I don't want that. And so um, that is one of the unique things with us and our Common Core is every major is touched on in one of the 10 courses. Yeah, so you will get a little bit of mechanics in almost all of your end courses. Um, it's because it's such a broad a broad category um you're going to do little bits and pieces of it throughout all of your end courses exactly that was definitely one of the things to note so um i'm mindful of our time we have about four minutes left um we do again appreciate you taking the time to join us today and for those of you who will be listening in at a later time Thank you to all my presenters. I appreciate you taking your evening out with your busy schedule just before finals. So thank you again for coming. We can keep it the Q&A open for maybe a few more minutes. Again, if you have any questions we weren't able to answer or maybe are too specific, the Discovery Engineering at UCalgary email. Uh, the Registrar's Office has emails and contacts too for application questions. So there is definitely lots of research. Please check our websites out, the Shulix engineering website um, and the registrar's office and the university's websites are huge resources when it comes to gathering information. They have a nice search tool. And honestly, if you put in one keyword, you'll probably get four or five links that will get you to the information that you want. So um, yeah, so will AI, will AI ever replace engineers? Let's end with that question. Um, AI is definitely a world that we are moving into, but we are still all, always needing to control something. So it is definitely part of moving into some of the technical electives that we can see in our fourth year because it is an industry that is is available, but it is still a person is still needed to control that AI for now. So good question. Interesting question. Thanks for asking it. Um, I'm, again, we'll leave it for... One session, but I do, or a few more minutes. But again, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you're feel free to log off if you don't have any more questions, and please connect with us. We have lots of opportunities for you. Come see our building, come see our maker spaces, come see the labs, the opportunities, and um, watch for our teams because we're out in the community, uh, racing cars and shooting off rockets. <laughs>